Hey everyone, so my hair is pulled back today, which means it is time for another face painting video, turning myself into a plant. So I've done one of these videos so far. I painted myself like my ruby rubber tree plant. I will link that below in case you wanna check that out. But the plant that I'm planning to paint myself like today is this guy right here. So this is the polka dot begonia plant. And when I face painted myself the last time, I wasn't 100% sure what plant I was gonna do next. And then somebody on Instagram said, why not you do the polka dot begonia? I didn't have one, so I was considering painting myself just looking at photos online, but it is a plant that's been on my wish list for quite some time just because it's really cute. Um, and when I saw my local garden center had some in stock, I went down and picked one up. I think it's just been about two weeks now that I've had this little guy right here. But why I really wanted to do it is because the, well, the pattern on the leaves is just really cool. Should be relatively easy. And then the back is red. So I'm gonna try to paint as much of my back red as possible. So this is the plant that we are going to use. Also in my last video, I had some comments that actually requested a little bit of a face paint tutorial, um, which I don't know how many of you watching this would actually be interested in face painting, but I figured I'd kind of go over the stuff that I use and talk a little bit more about the process as I'm going through it. I will try not to talk too much before I get into painting, although I probably already have. So I'll link a timestamp below of when I actually start putting paint on my body, um, but kind of a background. So first, I'm not a face painting expert, so I'm just gonna go over today what works for me. I really started face painting maybe four or five, if not longer, years ago, because I hated buying a Halloween costume that I would then never use again, so I thought I could just wear like whatever clothes I had, but paint myself, and then I'm using that paint over and over again every year. So that's kind of how I started. Now, the paint that I use, I have two different brands. So the first brand is Snazaroo. All of the face paints I think I found on Amazon. And I like Snazaroo because the color is pretty good. It stays well, but it's also water activated. So even though it stays put pretty well on your face, it's really easy to take off so you i can just hop in the shower and even if i don't actually scrub with a washcloth most of the face paint comes off anyway just from the water hitting it so i have like i showed you these individual ones which are larger i have a few of those colors but then i also have i got this most recently just a little kit that has a bunch of smaller circles so i could have more colors that i need without having to commit to a larger pot because you actually don't use a ton of paint when you're painting yourself. So these should last me a pretty long time. Uh, this is also the same brand, Snazaroo. The other brand I have is what is called, Grease Paint is the product, and the brand is Mehron, it's M-E-H-R-O-N. I have a black and a white. I feel like I might have had more. Actually, no, I see them right there. I had a couple other colors. Um, these I feel like are good for like detailing or painting on top of other paints. They're not water activated, they're more of a creamy texture, which means if I'm painting like a large canvas, they're harder to spread. Um, but if I'm doing something that needs to be highly pigmented, those work better than the Snazaroo. So I am gonna use a combination of both of those today. So I'll show you kind of what I do to start and choose the colors. Now the colors are never gonna be an exact match. I could mix some together if I wanted to, but I'm not that committed to making sure the colors are identical. Um, but I know looking at this plant, I'm gonna need a darker green. I'm gonna need a white for the dots. And then if you look close here, there's also like a neon green, which I have as well for the veining. So I'm just gonna use those three colors for the front and then the back. I'm just gonna use a red that I have. So I should only need four colors. I might use some black for detailing, but we'll kind of see how it looks after I apply the paint that I'm planning to use. I already did a little test here because I wanted to see if I could paint my entire body that I'm going to paint the dark green first and then add the dots and the veins on top of it because that would be 
much easier than trying to make all the white dots and then the veins and then paint the dark green all around it. Um, so I wanted just to make sure it could layer. So this is the darker green. I'm probably gonna do more layers on myself to make it a little bit darker. And then I have the neon green here. So that goes over pretty well. And then I tested the Snazaroo. So this one up here is the Snazaroo water-based white. This one is that other cream base, and obviously the cream looks much better and whiter, not as much as that green is showing through. So I'm gonna use that white today when I'm painting. Another tip, so if I was doing this for Halloween and I was gonna go out and stay out for a few hours and wanted the makeup to stay on, it works really well to layer a similar color powder. I have like a 100 color eyeshadow kit that I got Whew, probably over a decade ago. Um, and if you layer the powder over the cream, that helps keep everything in place. For me today, I'm not going anywhere painted like a plant. So I'm not going to worry about that, but that is just a tip if you do want something that's going to last. The other thing that I use are paintbrushes. I have a set here. They're just regular cheap paintbrushes. Again, I think I found these on Amazon. Years ago, I do have some sponges, but I found for me, I prefer the paintbrush, but I have used sponges a bit in the past. And what I try to do is keep the same brush for the same color the entire time. That way I don't have to like clean off the brush in between and potentially like transfer colors. So since the darker green will be the main color that I'm using the most, I'll use the largest brush. I'll use the smaller brushes that I have for the polka dots and then the veining detail. So I think that is everything. Um, and we can go ahead now and get started with the painting. So the plan is paint everything that you can kind of see here up in the dark green, let it dry, add a layer, let it dry, and then I'll go in with the detailing. I also wanted to mention, I do have a bowl of water here that I use to dip the brush in and dip it in the paint. I also have a towel to clean off anything in between. And then I also have a small mirror that's very dirty uh, that I'm gonna use as well. Typically, I would be doing this in a bathroom if I wasn't filming and use the mirror in there. So I'm gonna try to use some of the camera lens, but anything that I need to be a little bit more close up, I will use the mirror. So let's go ahead now and get the green paint onto my body. So I kind of feel like a Ninja Turtle right now. I have the layers of the darker green. Next, what I think I'm gonna do is come in now and do the neon green with the like circle and then the vines coming off of it. Uh, I also had my foot fall asleep, so I had to go ahead and stamp that around. But I think we are good now to continue on with adding the details on top.
All right, so the veins are now on, and I will say that even though I look at the plant to get a general idea of what I need to do, I don't follow it exactly. So I don't make sure that I have the exact number of veins, the exact number of branching off um, on my body as I do on the leaf. I just know that I need veins, and then I kind of put them where I think they look good. So now that this part is done, we're gonna move on to the polka dots, and I'm really excited for this one. are now on. So the very last thing that I have to do is paint as much of my back as I can reach, which is probably just gonna be a line down there with some red paint. But this, it took a long time to do the dark green, I think, on my body and enough layers, but everything else so far has gone pretty quick. So we'll put the red on my back and we'll see how much I look like the polka dot begonia. Okay, so the red is now on my back, or at least as far back as I could get it, but I think that's fine because if you're looking at the begonia itself, it's not like you see a ton of red when you're looking straight on the leaf. But here is the final result, and I think I look pretty good. The green could have been a little bit darker for the base of the leaf, but for what I'm going for, I think I like it. So let me put this down for a second. Um, and overall, I think that took maybe just about an hour. I uh, put on a podcast and just listened to it. All of this kind of relaxes me, so it is always fun to do. Uh, just in general, it's something I enjoy. So some of you may find it strange that I would take an hour out of my day to paint myself, but it is something that does bring me some happiness. Um, if you have any questions about face painting, uh, let me know and I will answer them in the comments below. But other than that, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If there's another plant you want to see me try to paint myself like, also let me know. Um, I'll maybe try to do this again in the next month, but with the garden starting up, it's going to get busy. But any other plants you have an idea for, let me know in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.